Hey guys, one of the most important things in algebra is remembering our order of operations. Our order of operations simply means the order in which we're going to go about simplifying or solving an algebraic expression. We had an acronym to remind us of that order, and that acronym was PEMDAS. So if you don't remember PEMDAS, PEMDAS reminded us that we are first of all going to handle anything inside a set of parentheses or other grouping symbols. Now other grouping symbols included things like the square root symbol or a division in which we needed to simplify a numerator before doing the denominator. Then we moved on to exponents. Exponents are powers and we'd solve those in the, in the order of moving from left to right. Then we moved on to multiplication and division operations and then finally we concluded anything with addition and subtraction. And that was our order of operations, can simply be conc uh, concise to PEMDAS. Let's take a look at a few examples. In example one, we're asked to evaluate the expression. Now remember, an expression is simply a collection of numbers and variables. And we're going to start off by substituting the values of our variables in for those letters. So we have 2 times the square root of 5 squared minus 4 squared plus 4 plus the square root of 6 squared minus 5 squared plus 4 squared. All right, now we're going to follow, follow our order of operations. Since we don't have any set of parentheses, but we do have a grouping symbol, that square root, we're going to handle those exponents inside of our grouping symbols first. So we're going to simplify 2 times the square root of 25 minus 16 plus 4 plus the square root of 36 minus 25 plus 16. Now let's simplify our addition and subtraction operation inside those grouping symbols. So we'll end up with 2 times the square root of 9 plus 4 plus the square root of 27. Now we're going to simplify those operations of the square root. So we have 2 times 3 plus 4 plus 5.19. Alright, finally we're able to move on to our multiplication and division. And we see that we have 2 times 3, which results in 6 plus 4 plus 5.19. Now finally we're down to one operation that's the addition and subtraction so adding from left to right we'll end up with 15.19. Alright in our next example Maria has 860 stamps in her collection. She plans to buy 20 stamps each month and we want to write an algebraic sentence. Now remember a sentence has a verb in it such as equals to or greater than or less than so we'll say our total number of stamps that Maria has is equal to how much she starts off with, 860, plus 20 times each month that she adds in additional stamps. All right, and finally in example three, or actually I shouldn't say finally, in example three we have another opportunity to practice PEMDAS. So we see that we have 88 minus 16 divided by 2 times 3 to the quantity or to the power of 6 minus 4. We'll start off by handling that exponents. So we re rewrite that as 88 minus 16 divided by 2 times 9. Now we can handle our multiplication and division. 88 minus 16 divided by 2 which is 8 times 9. Now we can handle our multiplication. 8 times 9 is 72 so we have 88 minus 72 and then finally we're able to handle our addition and subtraction which is 88 minus 72 and that results in 16. All right, in our next example we're asked to uh, find out the cost of running a 15 watt ball for 33 hours at 9.53 cents per kilowatt hours. Well our first task really should be to convert watts, 15 watts, to kilowatts. And since there's 1000 watts in one kilowatt, I know that I can multiply 15 times 0 0.001 in order to get the number of kilowatt hours or kilowatts in 15 watts. When I do that I get 0 0.015 kilowatts and now I'm simply going to take that 0 0.015 kilowatts, multiply it by my 33 hours and multiply that by the 9 or sorry 9.53 cents per kilowatt hour and that results in 472 sense. All right, now finally in our last example we have a formula. A formula remember is one variable set equal to an expression. So we see that gravity is equal to 2 times the distance divided by time squared. So we have a few values we need to substitute in for our variables to solve for our 
formula. So we see g is equal to 2 times 2m in meters divided by 1.6s squared. So resulting in the numerator of 4 meters divided by 2.56 seconds squared gives us 1.5625 and the unit on that is meters per second squared. Great work today.